Here we are, back in the engine room. This is not to be believed. In this week's video, we sail down the Delaware Bay, enjoy some relaxed time in Lewis, Delaware, and Chris does engine work and generally has this look upon his face. After leaving Annapolis, we headed north to the C&D Canal. The canal connects the Chesapeake Bay to the Delaware Bay. We made our way through the canal and anchored on the east side in Delaware City. We decided to take a dinghy into town and got a beer and a snack. There we even saw a replica of the Christopher Columbus ship, the Santa Maria. After a quick overnight, we headed south down the Delaware Bay. All the way down to Lewis, Delaware. This morning we smelled something coming from the engine room and uh, it didn't smell right. And then I opened the door and there was a little bit of smoke in the air. Not sure where it came from, so after we shut it off, restarted. Realized it was coming from the back of the alternator. So we've taken the alternator off today. That's this unit here. I've already removed it. And we're thinking about potentially replacing it once again. Oh, that's the alternator right there? Yeah, yeah. I put it up on top. Okay. All the wires are exposed, but I think yeah. there was some smoke coming out from behind it. So. Oh, the smoke was, what it, it was smoking from behind. Yeah, so we've got this new one on my one, depending on what we find out. All and right. uh, while we were in there, I also removed the raw water intake impeller, and I'm going to do a little cleaning up around the uh, left side of the lower engine too. So that's where we're at. The impeller project is over here. And now tell me about what there you're doing. We have the uh, impeller taken off. It's a pulley wheel, and this is the actual unit itself that goes inside here and draws water in from the sea and use it to cool the engine so and that's located under the alternator it is yeah this is the third of three belts um it's engine driven and uh, i don't know we're just kind of learning about it i don't know much more than that so uh, <laughs> learning as we go but uh we got it apart it looks pretty good shape so i'm gonna save this one and put a new one in uh, then we'll put it back together and hopefully we'll be on our way soon, maybe. Maybe not. I still had a few lingering and troubling issues keeping us from feeling safe enough to leave the comfort of Blues Bay. So this is Big Red, she's a Westerbeek 58 diesel engine, and I am not a mechanic. Not at all. But when something goes wrong, I make phone calls, scratch my head a lot, try not to screw anything up, and most importantly, keep Big Red running for years to come. She's happy, I'm happy. The impeller went back on fine, a few bolts, hose clamps, and a belt. It did its job once installed again, at least I think. And I got the alternator back in. Not too hard of a job, although I was pretty happy that I could actually do it. With the alternator on and the impeller in, I couldn't figure out why the gauges were jumping around, and most importantly, why the engine temperature was surpassing 220 degrees. That impeller, when working properly, is supposed to keep the engine at 180. I was pretty sure the jumpiness was a wiring issue. Let's have a beer break, make some phone calls, and see if we get any rain. I do. I gotta check the snubber before we turn in. Even if I gotta put my raincoat on. Because? We do here on SV Rum Talk. I check stuff. Mm -hmm. Alright. We did have a rainy night, and we enjoyed it and went to bed early. I was woken up by Chris the next morning. In there. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Get out of here. After that, we decided to get some provisioning done. We took the dinghy to town and brought back some groceries with us. It's a many-step process with one person handing bags to the other as we make it down to the galley. Meanwhile, back in the engine room, I still couldn't pin down why the gauges were wacky and not being a mechanic and even worse of an electrician, I know almost nothing. I just kept looking around and poking around. I temped out the engine externally and things seemed good. I was still thinking that somewhere wiring was off. I did notice a loose wire on the back and reattached that. The alternator was extremely shaky, so I went back to tighten everything up and I found one of the wires had gotten loose, so I tightened them down. This little zinc acts as a collar to keep the drive shaft from falling out should those bolts come loose. So oh yeah, it's important. It was completely deteriorated. We found another one at Bacon's. Yes. For a dollar. <laughs> and I just put it on. One more thing off the list. Lewis was the site of the first European settlement on Delaware soil, a whaling and trading post the Dutch founded whoa, in 1631. Whoa, whoa. Hold on, Christopher. This is the Cannonball House. Look, whoa. that's an original cannonball stuck in the wall. How cool is that? This town knows how to landscape. Every yard was perfectly manicured and landscaped with beautiful flowers. It was a pretty incredible place to walk around, and I'm sure the HOAs of the area quite, have quite a time with the uh, Beauty Spot Awards. We even found some fresh rosemary. We always seem to find rosemary. Score! After that, we continued to enjoy a little bit of the neighborhoods, and we decided we were getting hungry, and we better go find some pizza. Pizza! What is that? We made immediate use of some fresh rosemary and I went back to work, this time checking the filters on the raw water intake. We did find some seaweed and gunk and at the same time I checked the filter for the refrigerator, also full of seaweed. I re-added some wires, moved some connectors around, spliced in, hoping that might work. Doing that, <laughs> you're such a dick. I thank you for getting me in all my worst moments. <laughs> this is another zero percent chance. This is it? definitely a zero percent chance, and not in the same way. This is more of a zero percent chance than the other zero percent chance. I think this is gonna make the video. No, it's not. No, it's, it's gonna. No, uh -uh. How's that camping pot? It's real good. Uh oh. Oh man. I'm telling you right now. Not making the video. It has negative zero percent chance. Negative zero. At that point, it seemed like Chris's hard work was paying off and everything seemed to be working properly. We settled in to watch the distant thunderstorm and got prepped to leave the next morning. Except the next morning when we got up to do our engine checks, uh, go figure, the engine wouldn't turn off with the key. Yeah, I guess uh, we better get to work and run this thing out of gas, I suppose. <laughs> Any... Well, what you can do, and I don't like doing it, but you can do this, is turn the battery selection switch and come on. You know what? I tried that and she still runs. No, stop it. Really? Really. Because I had accidentally done that one time when we were dealing with position and here we are running away still. <laughs> Maybe we can still do the fridge and just turn the battery off while I had a few things on the block. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, or if I, I, I don't know if it'll keep the 
vote, quote unquote, in the on position. Because I mean, I can pull the key right out. Sometimes the simplest of things can seem to be the biggest problems. We found out this tiny diode was in reverse. And once incorrectly, we're good. At last, we were finally able to set sail northbound, and it was quite a great reward to have such a fabulous day sail after all those trials and tribulations. Join us on our next video as we hit the bright lights of Atlantic City and the big noises, and we avoid yet another hurricane, Hurricane Henry. It's Henry. <laughs> <laughs>